Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video. We're back again looking at the ZVZ weapon tier list. I'm going to go back into looking at the healer as well as the melee DPS just because they're two quite small categories. Uh, so let's get straight into it, shall we? Uh, first of all, in the S tier, going through our key again, stronger is S, average is A, B is bad, C is crap. Um, we have wild staff and rampant staff in the S tier. Uh, and the reason I say that is just because you have very, very strong Q abilities, uh, having the AoE sort of mushroom heal, and it does actually heal quite a lot if you just spam that down. Uh, you then have the cleanse on the W, which is obviously a ranged cleanse. Just cannot understand how good that is in ZVZs. Uh, and then you have obviously the E abilities, which Rampant and Wild Staff are both incredibly high throughput weapons in terms of like the AoE healing. Uh, so both of them very worthier than Swartz. Um, Night Helmet is obviously quite useful, but one of them, yeah, you kind of need Druid Cows around them as well. Definitely bring energy potions to a ZVZ, it sounds crazy, but you will run out of mana and. Uh, yeah, it feels bad when you, you've got all this healing, but you can't do it because you run out of energy. Looking at the A tier, then, we have the Blight Staff. And I know some people are going to go, sorry, what? Blight Staff, really? Well, yeah, Blight Staff actually got a buff recently. So let's actually have a look at what it does. Uh, Blight Staff. There we go. Uh, so while channeled, you and your allies will be uh, healed for 52 per second while also reflecting 40% damage back to their attackers. Uh, the channel lasts up to 6 seconds, so you can play this in one of two ways. Uh, you can actually play this either as cloth, of which case you're going to get a lot of healing out of it. Again, it's going to be a very strong heal uh, and kind of uh, repellent to wanting to put damage back into them. Uh, but you can also play this as Judicator. Uh, so I was actually testing this running Judicator Blight Staff, stood in the middle of uh, a Zerg, Put my Judicator up, healed for a ton with Ruthless Nature, uh, obviously the E ability, and reflected quite a lot of damage stood in the front line. Uh, and obviously, I was fairly tanky being in the Judicator armor as well. So, uh, very, very nice sort of setup. Really liked the damage that this was able to actually reflect back. And if played correctly, I think this could be a very, very strong weapon right now. Uh, and actually, very underused. Uh, great Holy Staff really obvious. Uh, the Great Holy has obviously a very, very nice disengage on E. Uh, you do have to play kind of frontline with it, and I think a lot of people, again, forget that, that you can play frontline with it. You can get in their faces and knock them all back down chokes and things like that. You also have uh, Sacred Pulse, I believe it's called, on the W. Let's have a quick look, make sure I've got that right. Uh, Sacred Pulse, yeah, so you put that on like a, a tank or whoever's desperate for healing. And uh, it'll heal everybody, or it'll heal a certain amount of people in a radius round. I believe it's five people. Uh, 50 second cooldown is a pretty solid sort of cooldown as well, considering you're probably going to be running on one. Uh, so you should be able to get these off pretty quickly. Uh, the only disadvantage to Holy as a whole for ZVZs is it has no AoE Q. Uh, Generous Heal is still better, of course, but you have no AoE Q, which leaves it kind of behind in terms of sustained healing, but does obviously does have some nice burst healing. Uh, we then have the Fallen Staff, which again is another one people are going to go, sorry, what now? Uh, the Fallen Staff is the Hellgate artifact for Holy. Uh, Salvation creates a ground area that will charge up for several seconds. Uh, once it is fully charged up, it will heal up to 10 allies inside for 450, uh, and additionally remove any movement impairing and debuff effect. So it's a full cleanse. Uh, heals up to 10 allies for a really high amount, actually 450 is crazy high base healing, and it's on the same cooldown as your typical sort of engage uh, tools like Soul Scythe, Grove Keeper, all on a 30 second cooldown. Um, so what I say with this is, this is kind of that, you, got, you jump in, your tanks have jumped in, and you put this on their way back so that they can walk back safely through this, have a nice heal, get all the movement impairing and debuffs gone, um, and it, you can do that continuously. As soon as you start seeing them jumping in, you uh, place this just behind them, or even on top of where they're stood. It allows them to stay in the fight for a lot longer. Very, very strong positional weapon, uh, and again, very, very underused. This is a very strong tool if used correctly. Uh, moving into the B tier, then, we have the Great Nature Staff, which, in terms of large scale ZVZs, this would actually be a C tier weapon. 
Uh, it still has the AoE Qs, it still has the cleanse, but honestly, you would just bring wild stuff over great nature. In terms of small scale CVCs, if you only have like maybe one or two tanks, putting a great nature on the tank just before he jumps in, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It stops him being focused if anything is going to get healed. Uh, so it has its place in small scale CVCs, not really again in like large scale. Uh, we then move into the default nature staff, which isn't really great. Uh, it does do a fair bit of healing. I would actually put it at a higher sustained healing than Wild Staff. Uh, but you will burn through energy faster than anything else. You just need to put down as many Qs as possible. And when things go bad, you press E. And uh, you will heal a lot of people for a fair amount. But honestly, it's not ideal. Um, not not compared to the consistency of Wild Staff. And like it's on-demand healing. And exactly the same situation for Rampant. Uh, and Redemption Staff. Redemption Staff is a weird one. No one really plays it, and I can understand why. Because, I mean, look at the healing, right? So, you have to position so, so far back. So, this is the weapon that, in my opinion, if you said to someone, look, what, are you not confident in ZBZs? Or give it to a healer that isn't confident in ZBZs. They can effectively be so far out of the fight, they don't even need to be in it. 25 meter range. You can just throw this over walls. You can do all sorts of stuff with this that just get really, really long range heals off. Um, a 451 base heal is equivalent to our Fallen Staff, 450, and it's on a 10 second cooldown. So actually, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's very, very good for people who aren't sure how to position in ZVZs. I'd say it's quite a good learning weapon. Um, the Sacred Pulse, obviously, quite nice as well. But it's not consistent enough, and nature just kind of rules in terms of ZVZs, unfortunately. Uh, and then in the C tier, we have Druidic. Pretty bad, honestly. I mean, you can maybe put a seed on someone if they've got low, but a seed takes so long to proc that it's just not ideal, really. It's pretty bad. 20 second cooldown just doesn't really sync up with any uh, any sort of tank or anything in the ZVZ, really. Uh, and moving in then, because this is a very short video otherwise, we're going to cover the melee DPS as well. Uh, in the S tier, we have Galatines and Halberts. So Galatine. Uh, I would honestly say your Galatine uh, Ambush setup. So you get your three stacks on the front liner, you Ambush into the back line, you hit the Solar Stream. You can actually solo Zergs with this. I mean, I, I fought against Knight in a ZVZ. He was actually running Claren instead, uh, but did exactly the same. He basically got three stacks, stealthed him, uh, Stalker Hood, E, and just annihilated people. Does so much damage, especially with the AoE escalation, because this AoE is so big on the Galatine pair. It's just so strong. Syncs up really nicely on the 30 second cooldown, so if you can get them stacked consistently, which is the hardest part, honestly. So you have to definitely be uh, be ready to deal with that. But if you can do it, you're going to do an absolute ton of damage. Uh, secondly, then we have the Halberd. Honestly, Halberd should be paired really with the Soldier Armor. You kind of want to run the Internal Bleeding as well. AoE Escalation, you put that on a lot of people, does work, run the AoE Q, and then as soon as you get to 10 stacks, as many Qs as you've got, as you've got out, put as many as you can, and then E, and that E is going to be mind-blowing on the AoE Escalation, it's going to hit so hard, it's going to spread stacks to everybody, you're going to hit them with internal bleeding, and you're just going to see people melt, honestly, two or three soldier armor halberds can literally just run around a zerg right now, and start mopping people up, it's really, really scary when you start seeing good good halberds uh if you get even two together that know what they're doing it is really painful uh on the a tier we have bear paws and trident so bear paws you can run sort of the the razor cuts maybe run the aoe q i would probably run adrenaline boost instead e in adrenaline boost to get out or even battle frenzy to run out is not a bad idea at all but you do get a little bit less damage the problem is they've just reduced the radius on Bear Paw, so I would actually say this is maybe even a worse weapon now. Uh, it does sync up really nicely on the cooldown, but honestly, it's just not ideal. The AoE escalation off this means you do hit hard, so if you can afford to bring them, uh, and you're, you're pretty confident you can jump in there and get out safely, again, Soul Drama, not a bad idea for this, then uh, it's definitely worth having a go with, because it's really, really fun to use. Uh, and we have the Trident. Trident is a weird one because Trident doesn't play like a DPS, it plays more like a support. 
Uh, and what I, what I mean by that is, is you can use this in two ways. You can either jump into their backline, uh, of which you're going to give your tanks like a steroid move speed um, and whatever. Very, very nice for running people down because you have that increase on steroid. But you can also drop it onto your backline as well. And this is what I was using it for, is I was just throwing it. As soon as I see Soul Size and Grove Keepers go out, I jump on our backline, give them all the steroid, get them in and out of fights quicker, in and out with their cast speeds, and uh, fights just turn so much smoother with it that you can definitely do it. Obviously, the damage on it is really nice as well, so if you can jump into them, you're going to do a ton of work. Uh, pair that with Forrester Spears, or Deflecting Spin is hilariously fun when people start killing themselves on the reflect damage. There's so much you can do with it, and uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely quite fun. So guys... Uh, oh, sorry, the Spear and Blood Letter is the other two as well. So Spear, uh, again, does a decent amount of damage. It's not ideal, doesn't really sync up too well, but you pair this with something like a Taproot, something like a Shield. A Shield's not a bad option, just the basic one for the CC uh, reduction as well. Uh, you run with Spirit Spear just so you can get the stacks without being in the fight. As soon as everything goes in, you just eat in, deflect and spin out, or walk out. Forrester Spears with AoE Escalation is really nice. You can definitely do some work with the Spear. Uh, and Bloodletter, very underrated in ZVZs, but actually Bloodletter has one of the highest resilience penetrations in the game at 0.75. Uh, which means on the Zerg protection buff that normally would stack up to a, a crazy high number, you would deal 75% more damage than like other weapons would uh, which is just insane uh, and you can use that really well to get them executes off uh, it syncs up really nicely because you have the dash as well uh, so effectively if you just see people get low dash in or execute in dash out and you can pick up some really really fun kills uh, if you're feeling brave bring the royal leather shoes run throwing blades gives you that increased 45 percent increased damage uh, you throw the throwing blades out very very easy to hit in the zvz uh, execute in and leap out instead um, and it's so so fun to do honestly it's very very underrated uh, so guys that's this video for you hope you guys have enjoyed um, the next one is range dps which i'll be covering tomorrow so make sure you stay tuned for that got some big news coming out for the channel in the next couple of days as well so guys thank you for watching and catch you later goodbye